What a girl, what a world, what a life. Oh, I married Joan. What a mind, love and blind, what a wife to do. Giddy and gay, all day she keeps my heart laughing. Never know where her brain is going. To each his own, can he not ask why I married Joan? The Joan Davis Show. I Married Joan, America's favorite comedy show, starring America's queen of comedy, Joan Davis, as Mrs. Joan Stevens. And featuring Jim Backus as Judge Bradley Stevens. you, Brad, not only as a district attorney, but as a man, it just makes me furious. Yeah. Thanks. Here's this phony talent scout racket right under our noses, and we can't do a thing about it. But it's so obviously phony, you wouldn't think anybody would fall for it. Sugar? No, thanks. Well, these two promoters prey on bored housewives, and apparently it's a cinch to convince them they can become great actresses. Then they string them along until they get some money out of them, and then they disappear. Still say a woman would have to be pretty foolish to fall for a racket like that. Where do they find these bird brains? Anywhere. They walk right up to them in department stores, supermarkets, drug stores. And the sad part of it is that after a woman is hooked, she refuses to testify. Yeah. You know who I feel sorry for? The husbands. Yeah. Imagine being married to a woman foolish enough and, and gullible enough to fall for a thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that pose? Da, 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 don't, don't move. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like this, Joe? There is only one way to describe this. Sheer poetry. What do you think, Joe? We've come to the end of our search, Harry. We've found exactly what we've been looking for. What's the matter, fellas? Did you lose something? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe. Joe. Is this a doll? Wow. A living one? I'm telling you. At the counter? Never dreamed. Is either. this an angel? A doll. A little oh. doll. I tell you, Harry, you just oh. can't get over it. Imagine our being lucky enough to walk into a drugstore and find a dream like this. Listen to me when I tell you, Harry, a star is born. Madam, perhaps I better explain. Me and my partner are talent agents from Hollywood. It's our responsibility to find new personalities and make top flight actresses out of them overnight. You are exactly what motion pictures need today. But exactly. Motion pictures need me? Gosh, television must have hurt the movies more than I thought. Lady, I have been a talent scout for 30 years, and when there's any talent around, I can see it. He can see it. It only took one look for me to see that you had that certain, that certain something. Only one look. It's hard to describe, but when you've got it, you've got it, and you've got it. Oh, she's got it. Oh, sure, I've got it. <laughs> I got a whole drawer full, and uh, I... I don't think I know what you're talking about, though. It's a certain magic that happens only once in a generation. Peter Barra had it. Clara Bow had it. Marilyn Monroe has it. And you have it. Let me be the first to congratulate you. And let me be the second. <laughs> Sheba, come back, little Sheba. Where are you, little Sheba? I just love peppy music. <laughs> An Oscar for me? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Members of the Academy, I, I simply don't know how to thank you. But of course I couldn't have done it alone. I must thank the members of my crew 
and also the members of the, the entire staff. And my, no autographs, please. And, and I would like to... Brad. Oh, Brad. I was wondering what your plan was doing in my plan. Well, Joni, what's going on? What was that act you were just doing? Brad, look at me. Sure. Well, what do you see? I see you, and I like it. Is that all? Are you blind? Can't you tell that I have it? What it? It it. I'm going to be a big movie star like uh, Marilyn Monroe and uh, Esther Williams. Uh, Joan, why don't you tell me the whole story? Well, there really isn't very much to tell, Brad. You see, I was sitting in this drugstore, and two men came over to me, and they just loved my face. They couldn't get over... This is... Joan, honestly, two men in, 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 in a drugstore? Drug Wait a minute, Joan. Huh? You mean that two men approached you in a drugstore and told you that you had great talent and they could make a great movie actress out of you? Yes. But how did you know, dear? Oh, something like that uh, gets around. Like that, I'm starting to get famous already. I can't believe it. Joan, I'd better wash up for dinner. Yes, dear. But they just love my face. This face, Brad. They, they really have... Oh, you darling. Uh, Jim, look in that movie talent racket you were telling me about. Uh, I found a woman who will be willing to testify. You did? Hey, that's great. Just what we need. Who is this sucker? My wife. Holy smokes, Brad. I, it, I'm sorry. There's nothing personal in what I said, you know. I know. But uh, what'll we do now? Well, don't say a word to Joan. Just let her go ahead with everything. They'll audition her and tell her she needs a week's instruction and promise to give her a screen test at a major studio. Then I'll give you some marked bills for her to give them. That way we can catch these two fellas red-handed. You know something, Harry? I'm worried. I don't think that Mrs. Stevens fell for it. I think she's a little too smart. Smart? The only thing worries me is when she got brains enough to find the place. Come in. Sorry I'm late, fellas. I had a hard time finding the place. Mrs. Stevens, <laughs> even more beautiful than I remembered you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Trapp. Well, really. Now, shall we begin with your audition? Audition? Of course, we must make absolutely sure that you have talent. We can't afford to take a chance because millions of dollars are involved here. Let's begin with the voice test. Joe, the talent chart? The talent chart at once. Now, Mrs. Stevens, repeat after me. How? No. Brown. How? How? No. Brown. Joe, did you hear that? Did I hear it? Oh, the music of those tones, what timbre, oh. what pitch! You passed your voice test with flying colors. Voice test 100%. Congratulations. Oh, yes. And now, Harry, it's time for the emotion test. Are you ready, Mrs. Stevens? Oh, I suppose so. We All start right. with anger. You are in a situation where you are angry, but positively furious. Now, will you give us some anger? <laughs> Yes, some oregano is magnificent, magnificent, but oh, the ticker, you know. Oh, the goosebumps. I would say anger, 100%. Now, Mr. Stevens, you have heard something that's made you very happy, very happy. You are absolutely ecstatic. Now, may we have happiness? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, just great. Oh. Just great, Mrs. Stevens. Just great. Oh, sad. Now, now, Mrs. Stevens. Sadness. Sadness. Shall we continue now with sadness? Complete sadness. change. Now, in this situation, you've had some bad news. You're very sad. Now, may we see sorrow? Oh, 
Oh, boy, is she sad. Well, it's saddest, yes. Uh, sadness, 100%. I guess I overdid it a little. No, no, no. Sorry. Great. Just great. Stevens, I can't stand it. You can do anything. But oh. anything. Now, Mr. Stevens, may we see surprise? Hate, fear, boredom, jealousy, envy, love, disgust, faith, hope, charity. Oh, Mrs. Stevens, that's the most sensational display of acting I've ever seen. You passed your audition with flying colors. 900 percent? No, she didn't get 900. No, I know Mr. it is. Oh, Mrs. Steve, congratulations. Hey, just hey, wonderful. Just hey, wonderful. to be remembered. Oh, it's going to come oh, on yes, Mrs. Stevens just so talented. Oh, your husband will be terribly oh. pleased. Sit right down. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you, never saw it, never saw it now, before. Mrs. Stevens, we're going to tell you what we're going to do for you. We are going to give you one week of expert instruction. At the end of that time, you're going to get a screen test with a major studio. Oh, Mr. Trenwick, a screen test? Of course, there'll be a few minor expenses involved in this test. A few tips here and there, but you won't mind that. Well, of course not, after all. I want a few minor tips. Uh, absolutely, because what is $500, considering what you're going to get for it? Well, of course not, after all. What's five... Uh, is that $500? Yes, and remember, you're going to sign a million-dollar contract. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, take it out of my million dollars. Uh, no, uh, no, Mrs. Stevens. I don't think we'd like to have a thing like that happen. Everything you make, you keep. Well, where am I going to get $500? How about your husband? My husband? <laughs> well, what wife can get $500 from her husband just like that? Don't you have uh, girlfriends? You could borrow it from them. Borrow? Well, yes, that's an idea. I could borrow it from the girls and, and... Oh, but I think I'm going to have an awfully tough time trying to talk him into it. What, a great actress like you? Harry, why, it would be a cinch for you. I tell you what, why don't you try it on us right now, huh? Go ahead. Girls, I, your devoted, <laughs> loyal friend, am in dire need of $500. Could you, would you, find it in your hearts to lend me the money? <laughs> How can we refuse her, Agnes? I know, I couldn't, Myrtle. We'd give you the money ourselves if we had our handbags here. In a minute. Really? Oh, I can't wait to ask the girls. I didn't know it was going to be this easy. And, and girls, you, you must keep in mind the... Uh, Good neighbor policy, because uh, after all, you know, a, a friend indeed is a friend in need. And could you, would you, could you find it in your hearts to lend me the money? No. Doctor, dearie, just left. I have to have an operation. What? Yes, I have to have my left tonsil removed. Five hundred dollars. Cash your check. Either one will do. Five hundred dollars. Um, Joan, uh, five hundred dollars for a tonsillectomy uh, couldn't possibly be more than a hundred and fifty. No. Are you positive? Positive. Uh, but what if I have complications, dear? Uh, what kind of complications? Well, $500 were a uh, cash or check, either one will do, honey. Well, that's a lot of complications for just one little tonsil. Yes, dear, but, but, but you see, this tonsil is so infected that it's, it's running into my throat. <laughs> and it's running into my arm and, and running into my hand, see that? And, and it's running into my leg and, and my knee and, and my ankle bone. And, and it's running, dear. Running? Yeah, it's running into about $500. Uh, cash or check, either one will do, see. Uh, Joni, why don't you admit what you really want the money for? Because you wouldn't give it to me if I admitted it. Oh, darn you, Brad. You're so smart. Joni, how do you know I wouldn't give you the money if you, uh, really told me what you wanted it for? I can just hear what you'd say if I came up to you and I said, 
Brad, give me $500 for my acting career. I'd simply say, here it is. Thanks. <laughs> Call to be on stage ready and make up at one o'clock, sir. Uh, honey, honey, can I help you? Oh, oh I'm looking for Mr. Montaigne. Right here. Well, Mr. Montaigne, uh, Mr. Treadwig told me to get right. Never up. mind explanations. Get into that dressing room over there and get your costume on. This delay has cost us a thousand dollars already. Oh. Well, just take it out of my first week's salary. <laughs> Are you sure this is the right outfit? Imagine. They shot a leopard just for this. <laughs> okay, let's get on with the scene. Let's see, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... uh Joanne Latour. Uh, I'd like you to meet our star. Would you mind stepping over here for a moment, please? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> uh, right this way. Uh, Fonzo, Fonzo, this is Miss Latour. Miss Latour, this is Fonzo, our star. Now, uh, remember, you have never seen a man before because you were lost in the jungle as a child and raised by the animals. But a plane crashes in the jungle, and the injured pilot lies right beside her over there. Now, uh, you and Bonzo are taking your morning call up to the when you see him. The first man you have ever seen. Got it? Well, I hope so. I, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> oh. uh, well, let's rehearse it once, shall we? Bonzo, uh, you and Miss Latour will enter from over there. Places, everyone. Come on, Bonzo. <laughs> right, Mr. Spencer, we're ready for you now, please. Right down here, please. Feet up. Comfortable? Right on the set, please. Settle down, everybody. Okay. Let's go. Action, action. Come on. Frolic in. Frolic in. Frolic along the way. <laughs> You clumsy idiot. I'm stepping on Star's foot. Are you all right, sir? I I'm sorry, Juan, so I didn't mean it. I, I tripped. You're in the jungle. You're not in your way to grammar school. You're happy. You're carefree. <laughs> oh, did you like the show, Gonzo? Fine. You do it. <laughs> Thanks very much, old man. Okay, Mr. Poon, now you try it. All right, I'll, I'll try it. Come on, frolic in. Frolic the way Bonzo showed you. Come on, frolic along. Action. <laughs> What's the matter with you anyway? I meant in the mood like Bonzo. Oh, in the mood. <laughs> Bonzo's calling his agent. He wants to quit. <laughs> quit? But why? He says she's stealing his act. Oh, uh, Bonzo, I'm awfully sorry. Please, I am. Uh, uh, don't call me lazy. Bonzo, would you give Miss Latour just one more chance, sir? Please, Bonzo, Bonzo, thank you very much. For a minute, I thought I was fired. Thank you very much. Okay. You're awfully sweet. Okay. Okay, now we'll try the part where you see the injured, unconscious pilot. Remember, it's the first time you've ever seen a man. Yes. Got it? Yeah. Let's go. I won't do it anymore. Um. <laughs> Make up all right? All right, settle down, everybody, will you? Quiet on the set. Action. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're a beautiful young woman. He's a beautiful young man. The first you've ever seen. You're wonderstruck, in love at first sight. Don't you understand? <laughs> you want to show her? Good. <laughs> That's exactly it. Now look, can you please try 
try and do what Bonzo did, that's fine. Come on, Bonzo. Come on. Uh. What an actor. <laughs> okay, action. <laughs> now we'll try the part where you and Bonzo are both very sad because the pilot appears to be dead. But then he moves. He's alive. You and Bonzo were so happy that you both begin to dance with joy. Now, do you think you can do a simple little thing like that? Well, I, I hope so. I'll try. <laughs> You walk in. You move. you move suddenly. He's alive. He's alive. You're both very happy. You get to your feet. You begin to dance. Dance with joy. That's right. Just wasting your breath. I won't do it. Besides, look what happened to my acting career. Yes, you're acting. Acting, dear. That's it. Honey, honey, that's just the point. I, I, instead of making you appear as a sucker, dear, we'll, we'll present you as an undercover agent from the district attorney's office. A female private eye whose beauty and brains captured those two crooks. Yeah? Yeah. This is a real part for you to play. Joni, can't you just see it? There you are in the center of a tense courtroom. All the eyes are on you. The jury, the audience, the reporters, all waiting for you to get up and present your evidence. This is real drama. Bill Jones Stevens, alias Operator X7, please make a report. Well, here's how it was. Per the DA's instructions, I was staked out at this pill-rolling emporium at 5th and Main. I am real cagey. These two Sharpies move in. Size me up, size them up. I know they got me outnumbered, but I don't move. One false move, and I'm in a block of cement at the bottom of the ocean. I know I gotta use brains and beauty to capture these crooks. So I let him take me in. I went for the five hundred. I lost up my acting career. Now I'll never be Oh, 